Welcome to our sacred numerology class. As we get started, we're just going to let people pop on. So um, we were actually just having a really great discussion with Alita here. And so I thought, why not record and see what sessions with us really look like, right? Um, so I'm so excited about teaching numerology and I'm so excited about bringing sacred numerology to you all, whether you're live or on the replay. I know a lot of you signed up in the email, so um, I'm sure that a lot of people will be watching replay. And actually, I totally love that because I watch everything on replay. I totally get it. I am a busy mama. My name is Jen Kohler, if we have not met yet. Um, I have a an 11-year-old and I am busy being a mom and a uh, running a household and running a business. And so um, what Alita and I and Deanna were just talking about, though, which I think is really powerful, and I want to actually just start the conversation with this, is that one of the number re one reasons why I love numerology and how numerology has changed my life as a mom is that it helped me to understand my child, okay? And like, that's not the only reason why I love numerology, but it's probably like number two, okay? It's like number one or two. <laughs> Do you agree with that, Deanna? That's my number one. Yeah. That's it's, my number one, yeah. Being able to deal with the family and the kids and the dynamics, oh, mind-blowing. Right, so uh, what we were just talking about was that my dear sweet child, who I love so, so much, um, has, has a beautiful way of showing up in the world. And his numerology shows me so much about him, right? It shows me about how to help him to regulate his nervous system. Um, you know, and the conversation that Alita and I were just literally having was, she just said, I wish that I had had all of these tools as my children were growing up. And, um, you know, instead of moving through everything so fast or uh, not really being present in the moment, um, you know, having tools like uh, tarot or numerology or Reiki um, or EFT tapping or, you know, all of these really beautiful healing techniques that we use that all kind of come back to the same thing, which is regulating the nervous system. And how beautiful is it that we have all of these modalities, all of these tools that we can use to bring us back to center um, to know ourselves so beautifully. Right. And so I just, I really wanted to actually, I, I didn't know that that's how I was going to start this conversation, but anytime I'm teaching, um, you all know it's a conversation, right? I, I always want, uh, your feedback. I always love, it's not just me like, uh, spewing information at you. This is always a, a circle. And I really, um, I really love to hear what other people have to say. So um, if you're on the replay or if you're live, please feel free to, to say what you're thinking, to um, say what's on your mind, to ask questions. Um, I'm a pretty casual human. So, um, but yeah, so like knowing yourself, that is for me, the, the, the crux and the key uh, to numerology. And so knowing my son, knowing my husband, um, this has changed so many things in my life. Um, I used to try to control everything. And it's actually one of the lower aspects of my number, of my numerology. I'm a number four. Um, I am uh, the emperor archetype and I like to control and I like to lead and I like to do things my own way. And that's great when you're like leading a business. <laughs> but when you're leading in a family or, or co-parenting in a family, it actually is really helpful to uh, find the high side of the number and to learn the high side of your personality and understand some of the different uh, reasons why you might be uh, behaving in a specific way. And also thinking about like my child. So, you know, I am very practical and grounded and I'm like, all right, let's go kid. Come on. Like, <laughs> 
let's move. And he has this thing and you're going to learn about it. I'm going to teach you about it. He has something called the arrow of passivity, which means that he does not want to be active. Deanna, raise your hand if you can relate to understanding that because you have the arrow of activity too, right? And I have a child with the arrow of passivity. Yes, you do. Yeah. And so understanding that our children are showing up in a very different way than we did as children or that we do now as adults. And knowing that in the 1900s, yes, I just said the 1900s, in the 1900s, we were born to be determined and to be active and to be go-getters. That's like actually part of why uh, the people in the 1900s, I was born in the 1970s, um, people born in the 1950s almost all have something called the arrow of determination. So we can see different patterns as we start to move through history. When we moved into the 2000s, we lost a one and a nine. And we got all these zeros. And so we we started having all of these children who are like, oh, yeah, no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> uh, they're arrow of passivity. They're the arrow of procrastination. They have the arrow of disinterest. Now, none of those are negative things. They're just here to show us a very different way of living. And so that feels challenging for a previous generation, right? So um, that's just a little bit of, of me. Um, <laughs> I love numerology. I think it's so fascinating. Um, but let's go ahead and um, we'll get started. I'm going to bring in my little um, notebook and you can just follow along if you're on the replay. And um, and Alita, you'll be our guinea pig today uh, since you're here and, and present with us. We're so glad that you're here. Um, so let's go ahead and get this. Um, bum, bum, bum. I have to do something like share my screen. It's just like I have to use technology. Who is with me? <laughs> here we go. Share my screen. Here we go. Okay. So here is, um, if you are on the email list, you received this workbook in your, um, in your email and hopefully you've downloaded it and it gives you a whole lot of information. Now, if you have done this work with me before or with another numerologist, I invite you to number one, do it again, because practice is really helpful when it comes to things like this. We don't do things one time and like, know, like become experts and like know how to do everything. It is definitely a practice uh, makes you better at it, right? It, it, it doesn't make you perfect. <laughs> Did your mom say that to you too? Practice makes perfect. <sighs> God, I'm like, please don't say that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but practice does help us to get better at things. So do it again for yourself or bring in your partner. So um, since we're such a small little group today, I would love for us to bring in some uh, people's kids. Like we could do my kid. We can um, bring in Deanna's kids. We can bring in Alita's kids. Um, and we, or if you have a client that you love, um, I personally, um, I'm an entrepreneur. So obviously I'm working with lots of clients. This is my favorite tool to use with clients, period. Whether I'm doing reports for them or not, I love using this tool because it gives me so much information. You're going to be so shocked by how much information you receive just by having someone's date of birth. Okay. Now, not all your clients are going to want to give you their date of birth, but you'd be surprised if you're like, oh, can I get your date of birth? And then you can just be like, oh, I know their ruling number. I can see all of their arrows. I can see all of their personality. I can see so many points of data about people. Right. And that's not to be creepy. <laughs> It's really beautiful in understanding and understanding and knowing people, understanding humans. So if you love humans and you love to interact and study people and be an observer, you're going to love this tool. Um, Alita, now, have you done much of this yet? You've done a little bit. I, of um, 
Not a lot. I I I did a mini session with you, so yeah, I have my okay. mini blueprint. Mm -hmm. So so you're like a, a newbie. Yeah, I'm pretty newbie. Perfect. I, I'll catch on really quick because I really pay attention to everything when I get here. So well, I love that okay. about you. So we're so glad you're here. Perfection. Okay, so you you look at so Deanna, if you could just say like you can just go ahead and speak out loud. That'd be great. So being a nurse, I, you know, I open up the chart before I go in to see a patient and I always look at their date of birth. Yes. And I right away know how I'm going to be able to communicate with them. If they have the arrow of frustration, I have to just be straightforward. Like those yes. are have the arrow of frustration. So I know it just, just spit it out. Tell me what you're going to tell me and be done. Mm -hmm. um, depending on their arrows and their ruling numbers, I know how to interact with them. So it's a great tool, amazing tool for me to have at work. Right. So not just for entrepreneurs, not just for mothers, but like you are a nurse and you're able to now look at people's influences, their personality traits, and actually support them in the way that best supports them. It's profound. And this tool would be amazing for teachers. Amazing for teachers because they have to sit with these kids and they, you know, they get to know them, but they they don't really quite know them. And this would totally help I, I make their classroom just flow. Oh yeah. I just, I love that so much. Yes. So really it's just for everyone. <laughs> so, you know, just to get started, like what is numerology? So, you know, as a child, I was told that I was terrible at math and that I would never make anything of myself in math. And so for my whole life, I thought math was terrible and that I hated math. And, um, and here comes my boy who I was just talking about. He's so cute. Hi, I'm on a call. I know. Do you want to say hi? Hello. Hello. <laughs> so this is Wyatt and he is my number five and he has the arrow of passivity and he's in his jammies. <laughs> Hi, how can I help you? Okay. Okay. I love you. Go get something to eat. Okay. Okay. Love you. Bye. So, um, you know, he always has to show up on calls with me. So if you're, if you work with me moving forward in the future, you'll know that you'll see Wyatt again <laughs> and he'll come and he'll ask me for screen or switch or something. Because you know what? Or food or whatever. Because that's how he rolls. And I would rather just know and not fight against it. <laughs> right? So that's pardon me while I do know. things. That's how all the kids know I roll, Jen. Just know that. I think everybody's going to be used to that. Perfect. Good. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So what is numer? So I was told as a child that I was terrible at math. Guess what? I'm actually a numerologist and I became a master numerologist because numbers are speaking to you all of the time. Numbers are a, are the language of the, the universe, right? So just like if you were to look at your DNA for looking at physical attributes or genetic things that were showing up for you, like disease in the body, um, you know, does your mother have high blood pressure? I wonder if you will too, um, you know, different medical things that you could look at. Numerology is a specific coordinate for your life path. And it shows us our karma and our psychological patterns and you you will be very surprised by how much it resonates for you. I, I'll be excited to hear how it resonates for people because in my, in my experience, it resonates so deeply when I do one of these blue, when I do a blueprint for someone, which is, you know, a full, a full numerological blueprint, a full report. I mean, people are blown away. They're like, how do you know that about me? How can you tell that about me? Because it looks at our strengths, our values, and it looks at our perceived weaknesses. I mean, there's all of the things that show up in these reports. Um, and, and it just is kind of, it's like, it's amazingly accurate. It's like really, it's really fun. It's really fun, but it's also such a great tool. So um, so you can read through some of that. We're going to get right into that life path number. So that life path number is 
is often called life path. Okay. Um, in the, the tradition that I learned, um, I learned from Megan Alton. I learned from Joy Kingsborough. And of course I've read lots and lots and lots and lots of numerology books. Um, but most people call it a life path. We called it a ruling number. And it's because we, um, they really did numerology based in the tarot. Um, so I speak to that quite a bit, but we're going to call it life path number here. Um, your life path number is based on your birth date. It holds the most sway over your personality. Okay. So I like to think of it as like, here is the mo the thing that is at your core. This is like your personality. It's like your sun sign. If you're thinking about um, astrology, um, it's the thing that you are going to identify with. And in this style of numerology, which is Pythagorean numerology, we are, this is like your external, like how you show up to people in the, in the external world. So again, my, my life path number is a four people look at me and see me as a four. Now there's all sorts of different styles of numerology, which we'll kind of go into uh, at another time. But this is really what you are going to align with when you think about your personality, okay? Um, your archetype, this is your numerology archetype is the thing that I'm referring to about the life path number. So in archetypes, I am a number four and I am the emperor. Okay. So if you just, if you follow along with tarot at all, you'll, you'll start to understand the archetypes. And if you start taking numerology with us, then you will, uh, really learn and lean into the archetypes. They teach us so much about, um, yourself, your, uh, you know, other people about your motives, your gifts, your lessons. Um, there's so much nuance and information in these little personalities. Um, it's, it's really quite amazing. So, um, yeah, so we have the personality influences help us to understand the unique traits that were coded into our DNA before birth. It makes us unique to others with our ruling number, okay? So the personality influences are, um, are things that differentiate us from other fours, right? So you're going to have other numbers in your chart. You'll see that soon. And you'll recognize that those things make you just a little different from the four standing next to you, unless you have the exact same birth date, uh, in which case you'll be very similar. <laughs> um, there will be differentiators. Like there's a million, millions and millions of fours in the world. And yet I am born on a very specific date. And so I have personality influences in my being that make me just different from other fours. Does that make sense? Anybody have questions about that? So yeah, so these are the these are the things that really make us more unique to the other to the other the others in the world. Okay, so for example, here is mine, okay? So now you all know my birthday. It's July 12th, 1974. I'm having a birthday in a mere 3 weeks and I will be 50. Very excited. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to actually just add up all of the digits of our birthday. Now, since, like I said, we're such a small group, feel free to do more than one, do yourself and your partner, do yourself and one or two of your children, whatever that looks like for you. And, um, so I'll give you just some space and time right now to do that. And then if you have any questions or if you'd like to announce your number, please do so. And so then here is the, the, in your workbook, here's the thing. I think you have this, Alita, yeah. My page one is different though. I added some things. Okay, okay, good. I'll add that back in. I'll add that for you. I'll, I'll throw it into the, the co-op. Thanks, chicken. Mm, you're welcome.
One of my many notebooks with numerology in them. I like to print everything off and put it into a spiral notebook, <laughs> or I mean, into a three ring notebook. <laughs> yes, with the sleeves and everything. I love sleeves. Yes, we are sleeve people. <laughs> Jen, if you come up with a 10, you make it a one. So you can make it a one, but I, we would read it as a 10. Okay. Yep. I have two tens. My both two children are tens. Oh, yes. Okay. I love it. That is outstanding. Oh, it's two gins over 11. Okay. Right now I'm like looking for something. All the numerology, so many times. I've taken been taking numerology since uh, 2018. So I have a lot of notebooks and I have a lot of three ring binders. It's kind of exciting. It's like gold. They are like gold. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it's really good. It is, okay. Yeah. So tell me your two kiddos' dates of birth. I have Zach is 12 21 94. Okay. And Izzy is 05 3101. 3101? Yep. Okay. And then what's yours? Mine is 10 13 64. You think I'd have that memorized by now? I know, right? <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna do yours first. What's your number? Did you do your number yet? Uh, I think I'm a I'm a five. I thought okay. I was a four, but then I realized I'm a five. I think your day number is four because that's one plus three. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So you are. No, you're a seven. A seven ruling number, yes. Yeah. I'm a chariot. Yeah, you're a chariot, like uh like Carissa. So you're the chariot. You have a you have a four day number that speaks to the rhythm that you carry in your life, which we will talk about uh maybe later today or tomorrow. We're gonna really focus on that. Um on your on your chariotness, your number seven. Um, and then you carry one, one, three, one, nine, six, and four. Oh yeah. You have the arrow of mental activity, right? And you have the arrow of hypersensitivity. Okay, now we'll play more with the, with the with these names um and the actual arrows themselves and like the depth if if you come into like taking a numerology class that's pretty depthful but what I will say about you is that you are the 7 you are the chariot okay and so here is the planes that we're talking about and I'm going to come back to these in just a second but we're going to go into the seven. Oh, nice. So you are a natural leader and teacher. Okay. You are meant to be in motion. Um, you push the boundaries of what is. You are a very physical number. The, the seven is a very, it is on the physical plane. It's a very physical number. You excel at walking in the unknown and showing others the way. Now here's, you're going to love this so much. I'm going to give you just a little um, affirmation for yourself, which I, is I am living faith. Mm -hmm. And it really, I mean, just knowing you it really speaks to who you really are. I think it really will. I know that that will resonate so deeply for you. Um, so when you are really tuned into who you really are, you excel. When you forget who you are, you flail around like a crazy person. Yeah. 
Is that true? <laughs> yep. I am always, oh boy, circle the wagon. I know. Yeah. I'm like circling the wagon. She's circling the wagon. <laughs> <laughs> so I know this about you because you're in our membership. And so I know you <laughs> and I've had several yep. interviews with you, um, but you do have this deep sense of faith and trust. And that is inherent in you. That is not something that you can really shy away from. It's part of who you are. So it's a deep surrender right, to who that is. Um, challenges and obstacles, so indecision, choices. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, in order to thrive, you must decide, right? Like you must become a really excellent decider. It's like make a choice and then be like really just so good with it, yep. right? Discernment, yep. Yep. I know that that's something that you have worked on and, and been learning and really, and really landing into. Yeah. Wow. Um, so sometimes you'll suffer the consequences of inaction and that just looks like when you don't take action toward the dreams or the things that you want, it makes you feel like it will make it it will make you suffer it just will make you it, it's that decision choice thing right and so not taking an action is also a choice right yeah. so sometimes that will be probably good for you but i would say you often find yourself suffering the consequences of an action when you overthink yeah that that's the next piece yeah so um, if you wait until the last possible minute to make a choice it makes you feel like things are unraveling so those are all the things that you can see in yourself and say, oh, I'm doing that thing that I do. I really need to come back to center. I need yeah. to come back to I am living faith. Okay. Does that resonate for you? Very much. Yep. Thank yeah, you, Jen. Good. And then values and strength. These are really important. And there's a space at the end, kind of not the last pages, but like there's a space like maybe four pages towards the end. Um, where you can write down the values, your strengths, and then we're going to create a statement of alignment for you. So um, if you want to find that, that'd be a great idea. Um, you you love knowledge. You are very much based in freedom, personal growth. These are all very important values for you. And, and that's important for the number seven period, right? The number seven period loves knowledge, loves freedom, loves personal growth. Like I know I've never met a seven that doesn't love those three things, like doesn't really value those three things. Strengths, discipline, determination. You can look at discipline and think of devotion, determination, teaching. You're a great problem solver and a natural teacher, Alita. Yeah. And then you're a quick learner. You're a great guide. You have high confidence, um, higher purpose. What else is possible for you? Those are some things that really just sort of sum up the seven in a one page. Now, if we did like a whole entire blueprint, you know, it's like a 19 page document. So you get lots and lots of information about yourself, but this is a quick, the quick guide. So tell me how that resonates for you. We're just extremely well since you came today. It's extremely spot on you know it made me cry because like well you know how long I've known you is when I really took the deep dive in so yes I'm I'm coming out of the wilderness well I don't know are we ever out of it because we're always healing something because life is always lifing yeah because life um, is always lifing that's right you know so you just get really good at healing it yeah you, really, you get faster and faster, faster. at healing mm -hmm. and then you become a better and better creator yeah, as quick as we need to become, need to be with our apologies. Yeah, is how is how quick we will become with our healing. Will we will come? You know what I'm trying to say. That is like <laughs> the right. Like it's. It, I mean, that's like why I love numerology. Um, is because it is such a personal growth tool, and when we can come in and find forgiveness for the things that we're not living up to yet in our in our own minds or in our own experiences. And we can recognize that and be like, oh, huh, I can forgive myself. I can forgive that person. I can forgive. It's like, that's like, I think just one of the most 
important tools that numerology actually has really shown me. Yeah. So your Izzy, she's 531, 2001. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So she is five plus three plus one plus two plus one. Oh, see, I got two different answers. So see, I'm not good good at math. Kidding. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. She's a, a three. She's the is that what you got for her? Um I would I have 53101 that she's a I don't have a three. Why don't I have a three, Jen? Because you didn't add in the 2001. So oh, two zero zero one. Yeah. Okay. So five plus three plus one plus two plus one equals three. Yeah. And then she's a day number four like you. So she carries a four energy like you do in her day number. Okay. Now she has, we're going to look at her little tic-tac-toe. The tic-tac-toe just, um, I'm just doing this on a little piece of paper. This tic-tac-toe just looks like this. I have a very fancy software that I also use. But this little tic-tac-toe on a piece of paper works beautifully, especially if you have a napkin in front of you and you're at a restaurant with your new BFFs and you're like, oh my God, let me show you what I just learned. <laughs> That's like the funnest party trick, okay? You're going to be like, oh, you're a number three. You're the empress, okay? And I'm going to tell you all about yourself with a couple of my little quick guides, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna tell yep. you what your little arrows are. And you can do that all on a napkin. It's very fun. So we see that she has a five. We see that she has a three. She has a one, she has a two, and she has a one. So she has the arrow of passivity like Wyatt. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I love this. It's so fun. Okay. She also has the one, two, three. So that is the arrow of, which one is that one, Deanna? Do you remember? Why can't I think of it out loud this right now? Planner. I have it. It's oh, the arrow. planner. Thank you. Yeah. She has the, she's okay. So she's a passive planner. Does that resonate? Yeah. Oh, she's good. Yep. She took over in high school. Yep. Oh with some yeah. things yeah so planning is a forte for her she has she has a three a two and a one in her in her numerology in her date of birth so she carries wisdom in the mind in the heart and in the gut that help her to be an excellent planner but she also is doesn't have the planner of the activity I mean, she doesn't have the arrow of activity. She has passivity. So she only does things when she really wants to, but she's very good at planning them. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Okay. And then she has a, a five in the center. So the five in the center means she's very heart centered. Okay. So she has a very big heart and the five is attached to every single number in the tic-tac-toe. And so we always look mm -hmm. at a five, anyone with five energy in their chart is going to have a big, huge heart and have um, a lot of connection. They're going to feel very easily connected to many people, all the numbers. They feel connected to every number because they really carry their energy in their heart space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, since we have a planner in, in the house, De Deanna, tell us about the arrow of the planner. I live by my calendar. Yeah, you do. I live by the calendar. Um, it drives me nuts when people would, we're, we're going to do something. Okay. When, oh, I'll let you know, I, like, don't last minute me. I need to know in advance. Like it, yeah. it hurts my brain. It's hard for you. Yeah. The so how do you manage that though? Like without being overly rigid? Um, I just, well, okay. Well, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. That I right. kind of, if you plan so it. Kind of learning how to like move with the flow. I mean, I can attest since you and I have been together for so long. Yeah. But I still live by the planner just because life, like you said, Alita is life all the time. Mm -hmm. And with the kids in the house and, and the man and all the things there's all and the dogs, there's always something. So I always try to look at the planner and make sure that, yeah. Yeah. 
the the arrow of the planner just really states like that you're excellent at executing a plan. It doesn't mean we're excellent at executing it to the end, but we can develop it and put it on. Correct. Paper. Yeah, that's right. I have a hard time completing things. That's right. So it's always helpful to have someone who is a completer. Right. Yeah. So um, this is Izzy's ruling number or her life path number. She is a three. Gifts and strength of the three. Abundance. Um, they are great receivers. They carry the archetype of the empress in the tarot. And if you think about the empress, she's like, yes, I am abundant and things will just flow to me as often as they will. Like they are just, it's like a constant stream of abundance flowing to them. Now, if they get, if they get really worried or anxious, they might block that ability to receive, but they're brilliant manifestors. So the three sometimes carries a lot of anxiety and overwhelm. Um, however, if they can remember who they really are, that they are naturally abundant, that they're natural receivers, that they are the empress, then they can really, really turn on their creativity and recognize that that is the key to moving out of that frustration, that overwhelm, that anxiety that the three might take on. Does that um, ring true for Izzy? It does, yep, very well. <laughs> Would that have been so cool to know about her as a kid? I know, I mean, I always said when she was little and her sister too, my 42 year old, that, that they had this light, like the just light that I just, could see in them like they're light, they're twinkle in their eye, I guess. But yeah. you know, a mom gets all googly over it. Oh, I see your light, <laughs> you know. Well, I mean, you're <laughs> supposed to do that. That's okay. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> oh, this is very cool. And thank you for adding that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So you can see her her values, her strengths, the you know, her energetic contribution. Um, they are, threes are amplifiers. That is like a big piece for the, the, the three. They are amplifiers. They're incredibly creative. And so just knowing that about themselves is always going to help them to come back to who they really are, right? And then we have, have Zach. Grab, what number did you come up with cord. for Zach? Um, Zach's is 12, 21. Okay. Well, I didn't have the 19 in there. So let's see. He, it would oh, have been, okay. a, it would have been, let's add 10. So it would have been 29 would have been 11 would be two. Yeah. Okay. He's I got to grab true, a cord. He's a true two, which a lot of twos um, are actually 11s, but a true two only can come from the number 20 and he is a true two. So a true two is a very strong, intuitive, very strong instinct. Uh, you can often sense what others need and want. Um, the communication skills are very powerful for the two. Um, they can pick up on what is unsaid very easily. It's something mm -hmm. that is very strong for the two. Um, in the ruling number, so in the archetypes, they are the high priestess. So the veil is very thin for them. That's that intuitive piece. They really are a mirror for, for source, for God, for universe, for all that is. And um, they have a unique ability to bridge the material and spiritual worlds. So that's what I mean by the veil is thin, right? They like have this natural ability to sort of almost go back and forth. Okay. Wow. And you'll notice that we don't say the one in this style of numerology. Um, some people in in Pythagorean will use a one, but we I always call it the 10. And the reason why is because the 10 is just, it's a higher number and it carries the same meaning as the one, but the 10 is actually just a more highly spiritual number. And as we add in the zero, it adds in the one and the zero is like, the human looking at the all or, you know, all that is God universe. 
call it whatever you want. Just call it. <laughs> <laughs> um, challenges and obstacles. They are extremely sensitive. They love external approval. They love that so much. <laughs> I'm married to an 11 to, um, and he desires lots of external approval. I'm like, oh, for goodness sakes, honey. <laughs> it's hard to receive feedback because they feel criticized often. Um, and that is a mirror effect that they're experiencing. Um, one of their challenges is to stop polarized thinking or black and white thinking. Like, there's no gray. It's all black and white. And I'm like, oh, man, husband of mine. <laughs> um, connection. They value connection, spirituality, love, harmony, peace. And I want to just come back to those challenges and obstacles and really stay here for just a moment. Um, challenges and obstacles are really important. And if you are a coach or a healer, um, and I know, Alita, that you are a natural healer and teacher and that you are going to have an EFT practice. I see you. I know that you're going to finish it. Um, you know, knowing information like this is so powerful for um, practitioners like that. The reason that I say it like this, though, is that when your client, when you have like challenges and obstacles of your client right in front of you, it's really powerful for you to be able to say, oh, I'm, you know, maybe you feel really sensitive. Maybe not. Maybe not all the time. Maybe sometimes you do. Or maybe like you feel overly criticized. Does that resonate for you? Yeah. And then that might bring up things for you to be able to work on with them. And then what I always say to my clients is when you're doing that thing that you do. So like in my chart, it's, you know, I isolate, I think people are mad at me. Um, you know, uh, you know, there's other things that show up in my chart. And so I can say to myself or to my client, when I'm doing that thing, I do, it's time for me to reach out to my coach. When I'm doing, when you're doing that thing that you do, when you're like overly circling the wagons, it's time to reach out to somebody and say, I need a little support right now. Right. Thank you like for we all me. need that in our experiences. It's so helpful to be able to pinpoint it and be like, oh, I'm doing that thing that I do. I need to reach out to my coach or a really great friend who's not going to sort of pull me down into the pit. <laughs> you know, no, you know, exactly. be careful who you're reaching out to. Friends are great, but sometimes a friend will just be like, oh, yeah, I feel like shit, too. You know, <laughs> Whereas if you're reaching out to a coach or a mentor, you know, you're going to get them at their highest place. Right. Yeah. And so that's why I love this as a tool for working with clients, because it's so powerful to give them that ability to just recognize something so quickly in themselves. Does that feel good? Yeah. Like when she mentioned the nurses, was it De Deanna or oh, Diana? Yeah, Deanna. Mm -hmm. Deanna. Um, hi again. <laughs> um, <laughs> When she mentioned being a nurse, how she'd look at their numerology. Oh my gosh, is that helpful? You can look at that before you even talk to them. Yes. And have a huge understanding. So that, well, thank you for adding that, Jen. Yeah, I love that. So Zach has some really interesting, fun things happening in his little tic-tac-toe. He has the arrow of curiosity and skepticism. So yep. he's very curious and he's very skeptical about everything. Yep. <laughs> and yeah. so of course we have a high side and a low side to all of those things right and there's always a little key that sort of unlocks that arrow and um you know we know that he's curious we know that he's skeptical um sometimes like what might really make life more enjoyable for him is to find the magic in life and just be okay with that and not worry about like does everything have a scientific meaning behind it? Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, he also has double nines that are isolated. So remember when I said, I do that thing that I do. Yeah. He does the same thing. It's an isolation. So sometimes like a, someone who has a double nine isolated will really isolate themselves. And like, you'll be like, where did that person go? Even like, <laughs> Are they mad at me? What's going on with them? And it's probably just that they've gotten in their mind. They've gotten in their head and they have sort of 
maybe gone down their own little rabbit hole of like whatever it is in their life that they do. Right. Yep. So um, that is really fun for me. I love doing these and look, we're at like 49 minutes now, everyone. <laughs> See, you can spend hours and hours doing all of these beautiful reports, right? Um, it's really fun to go through your family members. It's really fun to start to look at the people's, um, influences. So actually I'm going to come back here to, um, to this, this is the, the, uh, the planes. Okay. So this is the tic-tac-toe I'm speaking of. So when we start to think about this, we, you can see that this is a one, this is a two, three, so on and so forth. Okay. And you have the physical plane down here. So you can see that I have one, one, four, and seven. I have something called the arrow of practicality. I am very tangible. I'm very physical, right? The emotional plane is, is spiritual. It's sensitivity. It's that heart centeredness, right? Like when I was talking about um, the five earlier being a number that touches all of the numbers in the whole entire um, uh, tic-tac-toe here, right? It, it touches every number. When we think about the six, we're thinking about the third eye. Here we're thinking about the heart and here we're thinking about the root chakra, okay? So you can take it in many different directions, but the emotional plane is spiritual, it's sensitive. And then, so you can see, I only have one number here, but it indicates to me that I am, that I have a lot of intuition in my, in my being. And then up here on the mental plane, I have an isolated nine, right? So I have this isolated nine and that nine um, shows me that I could get into maybe feeling a little like isolated or paranoid or overzealous about something. But I can also recognize that the nine represents being a humanitarian. And so whenever I feel isolated, I move into my humanitarianism and I go do something that lights me up. I go out in the world. I smile at people. I love people. Um, maybe I went out, I go out and volunteer or I go in into my community and I, I do something to help other people feel better because it's the number one way to make myself feel better. Right. So if I'm feeling all of those things in that nine and that isolated nine, I know that if I lean into my humanity, into my humanitarian, <clears throat> my humanitarianism, that I will move out of that feeling. And that is a gift. I'll tell you, it's a gift. Um, emotional plane. Uh, Alita has no numbers on the emotional plane. And that doesn't mean she's not emotional. It means that she has the arrow of hypersensitivity. It means that she experiences the world in a way that is incredibly sensitive for her. In fact, it makes her a very natural conduit or channel channel for, uh, you know, information, uh, spirituality, however you want to speak to that. Um, and it's the natural channel, but it makes it hard because in your childhood, it probably felt difficult and challenging. Yeah, it was. Yeah, exactly. You just explained it extremely well. Yeah. But when you get older and you start to really find yourself, remember who you are and understand this world, right? It's, it's, it's the epitome of know thyself. It's when you really understand it, it becomes such a beautiful gift. And it's going to make you a brilliant teacher and practitioner. I've learned so much from you, Jen, this, you know, just. Good. You know. I love it. And then you also just to like pick on you just a little tiny bit more. You also have the arrow of mental activity, which just shows us that you can really be in your head. <laughs> you might have a tendency to overthink things. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> no, but also it's also a gift. You 
really a value knowledge and intellect and you could have a conversation for days i could right i want to yeah anybody and bring me somebody while i'm waiting right oh god you're gonna do so great with clients alita (laughs) okay i love this um deanna do you have any other things to bring to the table here any things you want to bring out from your chart or from your kids' charts or anything like that? No, I was just playing with all the numbers as you guys were going through them. I was going through them with you. So I didn't, yeah, I didn't pull anything Perfect. out of my- Love it. Well, you've been doing this for a long time too. So <laughs> you know what you're doing. Okay. So um, this is, this is just, you know, this is first day. Here is all of that information. Whoa, that was sorry, I want to, did I? Oh, no, I didn't do it, but I thought I did. Okay. I'm filling out a whole bunch of paperwork. And I thought that I like, like, I like all of a sudden it was like all of my paperwork with all of my personal information. (laughs) But I actually just said, stopped my share. So uh, this is what it looks like to work with me. (laughs) We have a lot of fun. We laugh. We are real. Um, We have real conversations. We laugh, we cry, we uh, do it all together. And um, it's, you know, I, it's my favorite thing to just numerology, Reiki, spirituality, personal growth. Like, does it get any better than that? (sighs) How lucky are we? (laughs) Right. Um, Okay. So for tomorrow, we are going to play some more with that grid, but we're going to play with names. So you may have done this with me before, but bring another name. Um, and we're going to talk about um, how we use Pythagorean numerology with our names to find uh, an internal and external, um, and then a lens that other people may see you through your name. And this is a really cool, it's a really cool technique. It's a really fun way to see your children, to see your clients, to choose a name for yourself when you're walking through the world. So you can look at your birth name or you can look at your married name. Um, You know, I often go by Jen Kohler. And so Jen Kohler shows up different than like my uh, Jennifer Kohler or you know, my maiden name was Jennifer Rule. So the, all of those things show up a little bit differently. And I think it's really, it's really sh- telling about how you show up. Like, you know, I'm an online entrepreneur, so I, I'm online a lot, but it's, it's really important how you present yourself because it's, it, it then shows people how to view you and it shows you what lens they're looking at you through. So that's a really fun one. I really love that. Um, again, we're going to talk about how you can add this to your practice, how you can add numerology. You you can become a numerologist and not be like, I'm a numerologist. You can use it in your teaching practice. You can use it in your EFT practice. You can use it in your Reiki practice. You can use it as a nurse. Um, There are, this is a brilliant tool and it's really fun. So um, do you guys have any questions or thoughts before we get off today? No, but that was fun. I haven't played it. I love it. Come play with us tomorrow. Um, Hopefully I will send this recording out to um, all of our email subscribers and I will actually post this into the Facebook group as well. So thank you, Um, Jen. Yeah. All right. Love you all so much. I will talk to you all soon. Bye, Dana. Deanna.